Well, obviously I think a more beautiful America would look a lot more like Colorado. I feel privileged to live here again. Colorado is beautiful, and if anybody had any doubts, I think David's choice of venues for many of his sermons last year would have put those to rest. Obviously, um, a beautiful America depends on our conservation efforts, our progress towards more sustainable agriculture, forestry, and energy, and our many efforts now with respect to drought and, and forest fires. I think that if people a hundred years from now appreciate uh, Catherine Lee Bates' poem, it's going to be because of the success we have now in fighting climate change and preserving nature. But when Terry asked me this question about uh, what would make America beautiful, I found myself thinking much more about the who than about the what. In her poem, Catherine Lee Bates writes about the pilgrims and refers to pioneers crossing the plains. But in her life, I know that she worked for social reform and she fought discrimination against herself. And I was very pleased to see that she promoted the League of Nations for World Peace. Um, I think today, a more beautiful America would have a lot less of manifest destiny and a much broader celebration of beauty. The beauty in those of us who were here first and who recognized the sacred as well as the sustenance of these lands. The beauty of those of us who came later as immigrants and refugees. The beauty of those of us who came here originally in chains. The beauty of all of us, no matter who we love. And even the beauty in our friends and family members who believe in conspiracy theories. So I still feel very moved by views of waves of mountain pinnacles, and I find much beauty in accepting God's grace and in working together to mend every flaw in America. I believe that a beautiful America is an America that lives up to the concept of what this nation was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a community of people not united by blood or lineage or geographic origin, but people united by choice, who had a shared belief that every member of the community was equal, that everyone had an equal voice, everyone had equal rights, and everyone should have the equal opportunity to pursue whatever brings them joy and happiness and peace. It believed that we could build a nation that could evolve together, that could govern each other and could challenge one another, but still live in peace. And it accepted the idea that every member of the community was part of the human race, not as a cliche, not as some kind of disarming weapon that we use when we want to disempower each other, but as a concept of how we should treat each other and a concept of how we should live together. If America could ever once achieve the idea of who it was supposed to be, then we would have a beautiful America. Let justice roll 
From a mountain peak, Catherine Bates reflected on the physical beauty of our nation. In her song, she praises pilgrim spirits tackling the wilderness, but then asks God to mend our every flaw. My America the Beautiful recalls those flaws and the beauty of the landscape. Much like the version we sing today, my spacious skies hope with a vision that black mothers do not have to worry about their children being beaten and killed by police or poisoned by water that indigenous mothers do not see their babies removed to a boarding school or to human trafficking, that mothers of LBGTQ plus children do not have to worry about their acceptance and safety, that asylee mothers traveling through the heat with their youngsters seeking a better life away from violence in America the Beautiful are not separated from their children but honored for their sacrifice. My vision is that we acknowledge the hurtful past and work for substantive change from the white supremacy that has haunted our nation. Bates' original words in the third stanza say, America, America, God shed his grace on thee till selfish gain no longer stain the banner of the free. Those words and others in her love song to our nation were changed over time. As we do the work to end the selfish pattern of institutional racism, let us proclaim as our banner of the free that black lives matter, that women's rights are human rights, that no human is illegal, that science is real, that love is love, and that kindness is everything. America is beautiful. I don't say that blindly. I see our flaws. Nevertheless, I believe, in the words of Amanda Gorman, that we are simply unfinished. I love this idea because it doesn't let us off the hook, but it leaves space to celebrate. And we have so much to celebrate. I could go on about that at length, but I'll pick two things. I see beauty in the ingenuity of the scientific community that has made vaccines available not even a year after the COVID-19 pandemic first gripped this country. I recently visited the Iron City Cemetery in Chafee County. Settlers from the late 1880s and early 1900s are buried there, and so are many children. The children's causes of death are often unlisted, but at least one died of diphtheria, which is a disease that we can prevent now with a vaccine. We expect our kids to be born healthy these days. That plays a role in freeing me a mere two or three generations later to live a life devoted to something other than having a lot of children at a young age, expecting to lose a few along the way. We are beautiful in our advancement, and we are beautiful in our capacity for justice. Years ago, I prosecuted a man who committed atrocities during the Ethiopian Red Terror. He was a notoriously brutal official at a political prison. He assumed another man's identity and came to the United States as a refugee. He went on to become a lawful permanent resident and a naturalized U.S. citizen. All along the way, he answered various screening questions regarding human rights violations on the forms, incorrectly, which is a crime. Now, he probably never expected that one of his victims would identify him in the United States in a chance encounter, or that the United States government would take an interest in prosecuting him. But both of those things occurred the view of this nation from the eyes of the refugees and former political prisoners who testified for us was that they were seen and heard. After 35 years, the aftermath of the torture they experienced at this man's hands, some as teenagers, 
was still a part of their daily life. It took 12 ordinary Americans in a federal courthouse halfway across the globe to deliver some measure of justice to them. So as I'm here today, often heartsick and trying to find ways to improve my corner of the world where things like gun violence, climate change, and inequality are concerned, I still celebrate the United States in all its unfinished beauty. As I reflect upon what's going, going on in our nation at this time, I'm reminded of a quote from James Baldwin. American history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. As we reflect upon our nation, now is a good time to think about what makes our nation beautiful. Not just our triumphs and our achievements, but our imperfections and our failings and flaws as well. And the ways in which we as a nation have struggled and continue to struggle to overcome those imperfections. I think that we could do as a country to make America more beautiful is for our government and the people in power in the quote unquote dominant culture to acknowledge the atrocities that have been, been imposed on people of color, people that the dominant culture has always seen as less than. Um, the Tulsa massacres, the atrocities at Manzanar with the Japanese people that were put into concentration camps, uh, the indigenous people, Wounded Knee, the Mankato 38, and let's not even get started on slavery because that was really downplayed. I think we need to acknowledge those atrocities, apologize for them, and then rewrite the history books so that our children learn the real truth about what happened in our country so that we can learn from that and do better. That's the first thing. The second thing is that I think this would be a kinder, gentler place and a much more beautiful country if we could accept everyone at face value uh, for who they are, how they are, where they are, instead of expecting everyone else to be like me. I think that would make us a kinder, gentler country and uh, a, a much better place to live. And those are the two things that I think would make America more beautiful. And thanks for the opportunity to share them with you. You know what? A country built on greed, supremacy, physical and cultural genocide will never be beautiful.
So after thinking about what would make America beautiful to me, I came to the conclusion that if we wanted to make a single place beautiful for everybody here, um, it would be impossible to create a perfect state of beauty for everyone without creating something ugly for someone else. So for me, I came to the conclusion that things that would make America bearable instead of beautiful, because to get to a level of beauty, I think we would first have to understand the depth of the ugly. And to do that, we would have to begin with a significant amount of education and tolerance building uh, for the overall masses. Um, I mean, frankly, we don't even understand or have a full awareness of the depths of trauma. Um, we have a penal system in this country that their form of um, reinstallment is to persecute to the point of trauma. So until we begin to understand just how deep these wounds go in our communities, historically and presently, we can't have a conversation around beauty. We can have an understanding of what would make things more bearable. And for me, a beginning stage would be to educate, followed by participation, to participate in community building, to participate in the prevention of the continuous manufacturing of laws that are structured with racist intentions. And then the reinstallment of our action into our younger generation, bringing them to the capital, educating them around cultural intersections, and also the absolute truth around just how come the culture of the United States hasn't changed. It's been slavery since its inception, and it's been covered up with the repackage and redistribution of things that we see as fads, which we confused for culture. When I was pastor of Boulder's community, UCC, a person wrote an essay entitled, Why I Have to Leave Boulder. In it, she affirmed many wonderful things about living there, but confessed that she tired of Boulderite's sense of superiority about how practically perfect the town is. I resonated with her essay and took to musing that Boulder would be a really great place to live, if everybody didn't think it was such a great place to live. Of course, Boulder is not the only local example of American exceptionalism. That view that America is the best, most powerful, and far and away most stupendously beautiful nation on earth. American exceptionalism can be a tempting notion, but at its worst, it's an ugly distortion that obscures the beauty that does exist in our country. We discover America's splendor, not by incessant comparisons, but through connecting with our land's particular gifts and graces, and by honestly acknowledging our shortcomings as well. One expression of America's beauty is found in its ideals, the self-evident truths of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness enshrined in the Declaration of Independence inspire the world's tired and poor about whom Emma Lazarus wrote, and who do yearn to breathe free here in our beautiful country. But even as we celebrate the Declaration's affirmations, we also acknowledge that the rights declared originally applied only to white male landowners, and the document's only mention of this continent's original inhabitants, whose land America stole, outrageously labels them merciless savages. Black poet Langston Hughes captured the troubling truth of our history when he wrote, America never was America to me. All too often, America has been anything but a beautiful place for people of color, women, and the LGBTQ community. And yet, there is something compelling about our country that cannot be denied. Even as Hughes mourned all those for whom America has not been the land of the free, he ends his poem with a defiant assertion, and yet I swear this oath, America will be. Yes, America will be its beautiful self, 
not by asserting its exceptionalism, but when all are welcomed, respected, and cared for, America will be its beautiful self when we embody Miriam Therese Winter's extension of Catherine Lee Bates' glorious prose, a land of indigenous and immigrant, and of sincere lament where we find the courage to repent. America, America, God grant that we may be a nation blessed with none oppressed, true land of liberty. Now that's beautiful. we celebrate 245 years since America claimed its independence from British rule. Outstanding. Foreigners of this land were able to immigrate to this land, be wholly embraced, and then take over this land. America at its core really is beautiful. I believe it. We inhabit an incredible nation, a nation that is now comprised of many nations. As the daughter of an immigrant, to me, a beautiful America is one of unconditional inclusion one that welcomes all backgrounds and celebrates all we could accomplish together.